Okay, so what are the real numbers really? So far, we only really have one answer to that question, and it came from the completeness axiom. Real numbers can be constructed as the least upper bounds of sets of rational numbers. This formed the foundation of mathematician Richard Dedekind's construction of the real numbers. But it doesn't give us a whole lot of insight that applies beyond the real number system, because it relies upon the very special structure that we had of an ordered field. So what we want is we want a way to remedy the incompleteness of the rational numbers in a new way that can build the real numbers in a way that can also be used to complete other kinds of incomplete systems. Now we can thank mathematicians like Augustin Cauchy and George Cantor for the method that we're about to embark upon, which begins by studying sequences of rational numbers, and then asks what are the limits of sequences of rational numbers. Informally, we think of a sequence as an endless ordered list of numbers. But formally, we can think of it as a function from the natural numbers into our number system of choice, which for us right now is the rationals again. So the way that this function works is it assigns to each natural number n the nth term of the sequence. And because the natural numbers are endless by Archimedes, that means that every sequence must be endless as well. This sequence, for example, we can express as the formula a sub n is minus 1 to the power n plus 1 divided by n. Not every sequence has a nice closed formula for it, um, but this particular example happens to. OK, so if we're going to follow this pathway of defining the real numbers as limits of sequences of rational numbers, then we need to answer the question, what is the limit of a sequence? This is where it gets really interesting. Every calculus student has at some point uttered a phrase like, well, it gets closer and closer to such and such, or it approaches, but it never touches such and such. But this kind of vague talk is not going to do. Because we have a tool for measuring distance, absolute value. And we have a friend, epsilon, who is a quantity that traditionally can be as small as we like. If we put them together, we can get a distance that can be as small as we like. And we say then, that a sequence a sub n converges to a number l if, no matter how close to l that we wish to get, the sequence will eventually get that close and stay that close. More precisely, we would say that for all positive numbers epsilon, no matter how small, there exists a term in the sequence called the capital nth term, this natural number, such that all subsequent terms are an epsilon's reach away from that limit l. Note the order of the quantifiers here. First, I get to pick any epsilon, setting u a target, and then u have to produce an n that hits that target. If a real number l that meets this criterion exists, we say that the sequence is convergent and that l is its limit.